I get the sense that you guys are like legit friends. Is that? I mean, obviously, uh, we're, we're actors. actors. We're actors. <laughs> no, we are. we are. We love each other. Yeah, it's true. What is it about? Like, why do you guys think you click so much? Um, go ahead, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. <laughs> I knew you were gonna. We're both from Wisconsin. You know, we don't have tattoos. Um, we're sort of these throwbacks a little bit. Well, I am. He's not. He's very current. And uh, no, yeah. what else is it? We have a you shared make you make me laugh, and you make me you and delight I make me. you laugh, and you do, and that's a huge thing. Has everyone been asking about the alpaca picture? No, no. one has. No Nobody one. has. What? Oh my god. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> well, like one a... person did. Yeah. Who? The the GMA? Yeah. Oh yeah. But not not in these. Oh, okay. It was like yeah, a pre-interview. Yeah. yeah. That was like someone's PR campaign. Like one of you guys did something bad, huh? And that was like your effort to kind of clean up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> no, that came was us. Visit, we shot some pictures, and he just posted it innocently, and then people became, picked up on it. It became. I mean, it was it was endearing. I will tell you that. If, if no, it's if uh, that's that, like yeah. That's a beautiful animal. Yeah, it was really uh, a <laughs> magical one of my great afternoon. Loves. It was a really beautiful. I love that. He has a farm yeah. in, in outside of Rome. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. So this was, I think, my favorite movie this year. Thank you. Um, well, it's funny. We talked um, after Inside, which I also think was a great movie this Good. year. And great, uh, went under the radar a little bit. Very this much. This is like the year you and Greek filmmakers. Is that what you're, yes. you just say something about them? Um, I love uh, director-driven projects. I love uh, directors that have a very specific vision. I feel like I feel more free to give myself to the to the project when uh, I'm in the room with someone. I'm interested to know what they see, and I try to be that thing, and and that gives me great freedom. That gives me great energy. Uh, so you always look for that. You know, it doesn't mean they're going to be your best friends or anything like that. That's not what I'm talking about. But they're people that attract you, and you want to go uh, to help them realize what they uh, need to do. You feel useful, and you feel engaged. And that's that's what you look for. This movie was interesting to me because it was, like, so, like, explicitly philosophical, and then also, like, the story was kind of, big. there's, like, big themes. But it wasn't pedantic in a way, you know? And I... Um, I wondered if there, for you there was like a, a, a one particular takeaway or like message of the film that really resonated with you. The the film itself is kind of or it, it it just feels like it's it's pushing back on on a lot of societal sort of expectations now and sort of um, some slide backs in, in how women want to be perceived and so on. I mean, we're, we're also in this very progressive moment on another, in another sense too, but you know, it's the journey of a woman that isn't, hasn't had any conditioning, you know, and just ends up as a, the mind of a, a child in a 36 year old woman's body. And, and then this journey of discovery without that conditioning and those, and even when people try to put that on her, she's, she just refuses to accept it. She hasn't been, her spirit hasn't been broken by, you know, the, the water she's swimming in, you know? And the people around her who are trying to control that and, and you know, manipulate it or possess it can't survive it. And in a way, either have to, and, and in a way, either have to grow or be destroyed, you know? And I just think that's a great liberation story um, that's, that resonates for today. Yeah, having yeah, having two that. girls myself, you know? Two young women. Yeah. Well, and it was funny because your character even like, yeah, like he denounces polite society, but he, he only has, like, he still has his limits, right? Oh, he's such a, and, you know, she's not allowed to leave his sight. She's not, I mean, it doesn't, doesn't you know, translate to her. And and that's I think that's a common thing, you know. I mean, I mean I've even seen that in myself at times, you know. Um, yeah. And I've had to learn, you know. I I'm you know I come from another generation, 
different than this one is straddling two different generations. And uh, But also the significant thing about that is it starts out as a sex thing and then it becomes a, a romantic thing. And with that, uh, the second he kind of plants his flag and says, I want to be with you, that's when all the <laughs> oppression comes. So yeah. that's another little lesson to learn. Well, um, you know, uh, I I really do. I'm a very big fan. So um, this one was up there with me for with Last Temptation and Antichrist. So yeah, that's good. one of my Those are good movies. movies. Thank you. Can you talk about um, like transforming into Dr. Baxter, like that process? And also for you, if if wearing a, a mask or having a really distinct look like a Bobby Peru teeth, you know, like is that, does that change how you kind of get into character? Very much, very much. It's a beautiful tool. It's a trigger. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I've been talking about, you know, everyone says, oh, they want to know about the makeup process. It's long, it's involved, but you use that. You see yourself recede and you see something else emerge. And then you get behind that because that's your job to consider another way of being and apply it to, you know, the, the script and the situations. And that's the thrill of performing. That's the thrill of acting. Uh, receiving another set of circumstances and trying to live it, trying to inhabit it. So that's a great help because if you don't have those things to push you, there's a tendency uh, to use this uh, thing a little bit more and not work so much from intuition, intuition and things that probably you can't even access because those triggers make you feel a different way and then you naturally fall. It's a, it's a response to uh, leaving yourself behind and taking on a new feeling. Also physically, like I had uh, prosthetics on my body too. Um, and that changes how you move. And if you're moving different, you feel different, and then you apply that to being the character. So it's a beautiful way to enter into a character. It's interesting. Yorgos is obviously, you know, he has some more, or some, some like, some of his films are much less approachable than this one. Um, and I thought what was interesting about this one is like, it's still, it is very approachable. It's very funny and entertaining, but also still kind of like high level stuff going on. It, why do you guys, I mean, you guys are both in a lot of movies. Why do you think it's so hard to do those two things, to make something entertaining and also like provocative and new and fresh? One for the ages. But, <laughs> That's a really but, hard one. But no, it's, it's a good question. I don't want to make fun. But one thing, let's do it, let's go backwards. One of the things that's important about Yorgos that is really worth mentioning, he is a true polymath. When you're with him, he knows a lot about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to build him up too much, but you work with some directors, they're really interested in only certain aspects of filmmaking or a certain way of telling a story or not telling a story. He covers it all. And how, why do I know that? Not only working in the movie, but when we, when we were rehearsing, he did these theater games with us that I've done a million times when I was younger, but he, the way he conducted it, them were very meaningful because he has a deep feeling for music, he has a deep feeling for architecture, psychology, dance, movement, acting. He's the whole package. So I think when you have that kind of range, you can bring contradictory things together because that's what you're doing all the time. I don't think it's a surprise that he also comes from a theater background. And, you know, it's in the tradition of theater, you, you, you kind of are like, you're not boxed in the way, you know, it's not like when you, when you do a tragedy, you're always trying to bring some humor in it. And when you're doing a, a comedy, you're, you're always trying to have it grounded in something. And that's how most of the playwrights actually, the great ones have work, you know? And he comes from that in the deepest way. I mean, 5,000 years worth of it, you know? And I think that, I, I, I think bringing that, having that experience, bringing that sensibility to film is really, it, it helps you to understand how broad it can be and how much it can hold, how much that, that's, that medium can hold. I just want to add one thing. Remember, we got to also respect the source. 
because he had a good nose. And he read this novel of Alistair Gray and found it oh, yeah. really extraordinary. And I did too. Uh, uh, and he went to Alistair Gray and, and uh, got the rights for this. Yeah. So it's really, that's where it starts. So he's also leaning into Alistair Gray's uh, brilliance. So yes. that those elements that you're talking about that seem contradictory are already present in the uh, in the root material.